Well, welcome back everyone to San Cabrillo Zoo. Today we are building for the sloth bear. The first Eurasian animal pack animal that we're throwing in here is this beautiful and equally as terrifying bear. This area in the real San Diego Zoo is reserved for grizzly bears and sloth bears, Andean bears, all that stuff. But today we're throwing our beautiful sloth bears in here. So without further ado, welcome everyone back to San Cabrillo Zoo. All right, well, here we are back in San Cabrillo Zoo. So glad that you guys are able to join me. My name is Leaf, and it's so great that you guys are able to stop by as we build two habitats for the sloth bear not just one but we're doing two uh so this area of like the real san diego zoo is full of like these bear pits is what people typically call them uh they're probably the best damn bear pits out there because even like as sad as they are they're still like really good in modern zoo terms in terms of like bear pits and stuff still they deserve like a tremendous upgrade uh, don't get me wrong there, but still, not the worst habitats out there. Uh, what my favorite thing in building Planet Zoo is, is not just doing the good habitats, but also sometimes you have to do some of the bad habitats, and I feel like all throughout San Cabrillo Zoo, we've just been doing the bad parts of San Diego. Really can't wait to get for, like, Elephant Odyssey, can't wait to do Africa Rocks, Wildlife Explorers Base Camp. Not those exactly, but my own versions of those. But for the time being, we're kind of just working our way down to the Asia section, uh, where we're going to put in Takins, Amor Leopards, all that kind of cool stuff. Maybe even pandas. You know, it's rumored that they might get pandas back, which is incredible. But we're not talking about pandas. We're talking about sloth bears, the other kinds of bears. Super, super awesome that we were able to get these guys in the Eurasia Animal Pack. They look fantastic. Like, they blow out all the other bears out of the water. It is so cool. So, my main idea for this was to actually take a preliminary look at the kind of structure of a habitat by using the faux rock pieces. They will not appear as, like, poignant as they are in this initial kind of, like, landscaping, but they will still be able to be seen kind of like, you know, in terms of the shapes of them. You'll see what I mean in just a little bit, but you can see I'm working with those first and then terraforming next around, like, those rocks and stuff. Stuff. Now, my favorite part of this habitat is just how condensed it feels in here. Uh, so, what I really enjoyed doing was making these really cool tall walls. You don't really get to see much of these in the finished product, but I still am so happy that I did this as a way to kind of mark out where I wanted those rock walls to be. Uh, in the real San Diego Zoo, they have all these beautiful faux rock walls. Uh, very old zoo architecture right there. I want to say like, you know, 70s to 80s. They really got like very familiar with faux rock work and it looked so cool. Even today, it still looks pretty damn cool. Throw my bears in here just for a little bit of scale. And once I actually get in here, I realize, oh, I made these a little bit too big. But honestly, I don't really care because... This is my own version of the zoo, so if I wanted to make these habitats just a little bit bigger than they are in real life, who's to say that I'm wrong, you know? I still do love, like, the sense of scale that you get from this entire walkway. I guess I should also mention that I did that entire cliffside on the side, um, a bit earlier before I started building this. Uh, I kind of made that, I would say, a few days before. I actually started working on this habitat uh, because I knew I wanted to make my way down here. I knew I wanted to do something, um, you know, in terms of like the bear pits, but I really wanted to take my time with that landscaping around here. And you'll also notice that the rest of the zoo is pretty much marked out uh, or at least landscaped for the greater good. Uh, you can see that once we do zoom out in a little bit, you can see that I've been working on, like, the canyons over there. You could look for that big tower back there, the big San Cabrillo Tower. You could see the way that the canyon kind of splits. Uh, if you've ever been to the San Diego Zoo, and if you haven't, please go. It is incredible. But, um, if you've ever been, you know. The entire thing is built inside of a canyon. It is crazy to see that they were able to landscape that entire thing to be a complete comprehensive zoo. 
Um, so that's one of the things I really wanted to bring into my kind of semi retelling of the San Diego Zoo. And eventually we'll be working on like, you know, the big bridge, like that beautiful big blue bridge that they have. Uh, and we'll be working on like Elephant Odyssey and the rest of the Asia Trek through the canyon itself. And then even the aviaries too, since, you know, we have those cool parrot mods and stuff like that. I don't know, really cool stuff. But for the time being, we're just focusing on this stuff right here. Really enjoyed this process that I did over here with like making these faux rock formations. When you're at the zoo itself, you'll notice that these caves kind of do hold the backstage access for these bears. Uh, really, really cool innovative way of being able to hide their hiding back there. And I wanted to make sure it was up to scale, so I threw in a keeper right there, just to make sure I was building in the correct sense of scale. And that's pretty much it. I also wanted to extend that out a little bit because my bears were escaping. Uh, and I really did want to make sure that, you know, it makes logistical sense to have them uh, have like the rock walls end where they do. I don't know. I really do like it. Uh, also doing custom fences in here as well. Very happy with how well that even turned out to begin with. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really it. I don't know. I'm just really enjoying this stuff. Um, yeah. That's, that's it. Uh, I should also probably talk about the upcoming schedules for Planet Zoo and stuff like that, and the channel really as a whole. Uh, I'm hoping to go down to about two videos a week. Uh, I'm not really sure about how specific that schedule will be worked out, but it will be Saturdays and Sundays guaranteed, and then the other weeks will be whenever I, well, not the other weeks, but the other days will be whenever I get something out, you know? Um, I've recently gotten like a few new jobs, so it's kind of like, hey, I want to make sure that I have enough time for that, and I also want to make sure that what I'm putting out for Planet Zoo, what I'm putting out for like the real life zoo tours and stuff like that, is up to quality standards for my channel. I don't know. I hope you guys have been enjoying like the rest of the stuff that I've been doing as of late. It's been a blast. Like that hippo video was so fun. If you haven't checked that out, please go check it out. Uh, but even just having a lot more fun with the channel, like the uh, Jungle Book diorama came out really, really good. And you guys seem to have loved that. So that makes me so happy. I want to do a lot more of that stuff, but I just won't be able to do it as often as I have been in the past. Really just a sad thing to say. I don't know, but I'm so happy that you guys still allow me to let me have this hobby and stuff like that. It's really fun. And of course, the mod showcases will always be here. How could they not? I love doing those. Uh, forgive me for pausing right here. I was just watering my plant. <laughs> I got a Monstera plant. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy about that little addition. Oh my gosh. I, go check it out on my Twitter if you guys want to see it. But um, yeah, that's really it. This is my first kind of video I've recorded since Christmas. This is like literally New Year's Day. So I'm like, I don't know what else to say. Um, how was your Christmas? How are your holidays? How was your New Year's? Any new resolutions? Um, yeah, just, I don't know, let me know. Uh, I really, really do love how well this faux rock work came out. Again, we're just using those aquatic rocks in here. Typically, I advise against just using those because it does get kind of boring and it does seem kind of old-fashioned, but for some reason, they work so well in the context of this. I don't know. If you're going for a lot more of an industrial kind of zoo-looking area, but still wanting that faux rock look, these rocks have to be perfect for that. They are absolutely perfect. That's the reason why they work so well in the urban jungle section as well. Just really, really awesome pieces right there. I don't know. I'm very happy with it. This whole habitat really took me a little bit to get back into the groove. Again, as I said before, uh, Planet Zoo really has not been a top priority for me um, as of like the past few weeks or even the past few months. Um, it's been really tough to get back into the game. I've been playing some other games in the meantime, like, you know, Fortnite. <laughs> I hate to say it, but listen, I need a grind for that Peter Griffin skin. I don't know. Uh, I've been playing a whole bunch of Red Dead Redemption 2 as well. Incredible game. Please check it out if you haven't yet. Um, and yeah, just having a lot more fun with friends and family. So really, I can't really say that I'm sorry that I'm, you know, stepping away from the zoo things a little bit more. Uh, really hope to get some more real-life zoo vlogs um, 
out there relatively soon. Uh, I do want to focus on aquariums during the winter because obviously I there's not really much to do at zoos in the winter because all the cool animals that you'll see in a zoo are warm weather and it's like yeah it's not really a point to go to the zoo in the winter though that does seem like a good tiktok that would kind of blow up again i don't know maybe once it snows i'll do something like that but that's really it for my plans what other big plans i know i definitely want to do like making the same blah 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 habitat and blah 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 many zoo games i definitely want to do another one of those um I guess we're just talking about, like, the future of 2024 in the channel. I definitely do want to get all my mods updated for Planet Zoo. Uh, I guess I should probably give a quick update on, like, the modding scene. Uh, mods didn't break with the last update. In fact, nothing new was really added to break mods. Uh, so all 1.15 mods will work the exact same. 1.14 should be fine. 1.13 should also be fine. Uh, but 1.12, 11, 10, and before that will probably have some issues, guys. So just be careful with that. But my main goal for this entire year is to get all those mods updated. I really slacked in 2023. I was just focusing on a million other different things, so things kind of fell under the radar, but hopefully if Planet Zoo does end, we'll be able to kind of take a breather and we'll be able to actually focus on getting these mods updated, which I would absolutely love because I want you guys to use all the mods, like the Kodiak Red Fox and like, I don't know, the Bluegill. I don't know what else I have in there. I don't know. Working on foliage in here really quickly. And I also did a little bit of an access ladder. This is, this is tip. I probably should talk about the build since this is a speed build. Oh my gosh. This is typically something you'd see when it comes to bear pits or anything with a trench or a moat for the habitat. You will need a way for keepers to access that bottom part of the habitat. Let's just say, for example, God forbid, a bear or, you know, a gorilla and a small child fell down into a pit. Um, totally not bringing up the Harambe incident again. Uh, but let's just say something does happen and something does fall in there. You definitely need to find a way to get your animals out of there. And whether that is building a staircase or a ramp or ladders, you need to do something like that. Okay, now let's talk about the climbing frame. Because I love making this climbing frame until I realize the Oceania logs are freaking huge. Like, they are chunky, chunky logs. I still kept it because I really do love how well it turned out. But these logs are huge, and that's something that you guys probably should keep in mind when you do build with this, is that they're about the size and thickness of the sloth bear itself, which is kind of crazy. But still, regardless, I really do love how well these log frames turned out. I don't know. I just had a blast making it. Uh, I definitely knew I wanted some climbing frames in here. I was just afraid to do it until the end. But I'm super happy with how well it turned out. I don't know. It just looks very freaking cool. And then once I started to add like the ropes in here, I was like, oh, we should probably change out the colors of these, make it look a little bit more diverse because if it's all one color, it's not going to be too interesting. So I opted to make like the thinner beams a little bit more of a lighter saturation. And then I made those kind of like horizontal kind of flat planks uh, into something a little bit more of a darker plank. I don't know. Uh, no planks on this side of the habitat, though, because I want to keep it, like, you know, its own dynamic, unique frame. And I'm really happy with that, because it really does look so cool. It has this kind of cool effect with, like, the waterfall right there. Really cool job with the waterfall right there. I don't know. I really wish we had smaller waterfall pieces. I know it's crazy to say. Maybe I could fix it up with, like, the jet piece or something like that. But, I don't know. It just turned out pretty damn cool adding the rest of like the ropes in here too just to make sure that it looks like this entire frame is secured that's a huge huge hack right there is using position snap with the oceania logs and the oceania rope coils 
it works like a charm in here. There's just a little bit of finicking that you have to do with that. But you know what? You could see the final product in here. I did some stuff off camera. Hope you guys don't mind. But um, that's really it for today's build. Thank you so, so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. If you guys did enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like. And if it's your first time here, welcome. I encourage you to become part of the leaf pile by hitting that little red button down below. Is it red anymore? I don't know. YouTube makes like a change every single day to their website. I don't even know what the name of the website is anymore. Have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Can't wait to see you all in the next video. Take care and goodbye.